Hello, all you bronies and Pegasus sisters. Welcome to the MBS show. I am your host, the man, the myth, the hippogriff, Silver Quill, welcoming you to this podcast. And joining me today is planeswalker and podcaster extraordinaire, Norman Sanzo. Hey there, guys. How are you doing? I'm very cheerful. I believe I can do almost anything. I find your optimism disgusting. <laughs> Let's turn that frown outside down. Speaking of cheerful, is our local mascot, Sapphire Heart Song. Norman, stop being a Mary Sue. Go to the corner. Okie dokie loki. Anything to make you happy. Kill me. Alrighty then. Yes, so cheerful, our mascot. So cheerful. And today, we shall be talking about all things Griffiny, a topic near and dear to my heart, despite the marked discrimination, the denial of destiny, the branding of the buttocks. Today, look at my tush, look at my tush, look, look, look at my tush. I did a cover of that. Today, we'll be talking about the fault in our cutie marks, starting the most adorable griffin in all of MLP. Second most adorable. Gilda? <laughs> oh, no, don't even try it, Norman. <laughs> okay. Uh, Gabby, Gabby, Gabriella. Oh, wow, she is... <laughs> Ugh, wow. the way you said that creeps me out. Yeah, that sounded a little too enthusiastic there, Norman. You're at 10. I need you to buy dial it down to a All 6. All right, then I'll tone it down. Tone it down. Ah, uh, but first, we should begin with initial impressions of this here episode. No spoilers, just our first thoughts. And so far, Safi, since you're the less creepy of the two, you go first. Thank you for actually saying that. <laughs> My first impression of this episode, I really liked it. Gabby is adorable, but at the same time, her optimism leaves me to be suspicious. Being so cynical, I can't help but want to, you know, claw I need her to eyes suck out. On a lemon. Being a cynic, you can't help but want to destroy everything. Wow, that's grim. Yeah, I don't. I'll hear- just be over here with my lemons. <laughs> I don't hear you protesting. That troubles me. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I genuinely thought she'd be like, no, that's not what I mean. But she's actually kind of agreeing with me. <laughs> yeah. Well, our little mascot here needs needs something. I, I don't know what it is. Go watch my Fault in Our Marks review. <laughs> well, I, I guess that counts as a plug. Yay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look. Shameless, shameless plug. <laughs> Speaking of shameless, Norman. <laughs> oh, God. Why shameless me? Because uh... you're the one who was acting creepy at the very beginning of this episode. Suck it up. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, um, this one. Uh, I've always had a soft spot for griffins. Um, we had Gilda, and I have to say that I've been... Influenced by fanfics when it comes to griffins, mostly Gilda, and having something new like um, Gabby here, it's a welcome change because all Gilda all the time can be tiring. So having Gabby here is something new and she really made a really strong first impression. And let's just say that it rubs off on you and you can't help but be happy for her too. Silver, what about you, man? Well, I'm just trying to envision the all Gilda all the time channel. (laughs) 24 hours of her calling you a dweeb or loser. It would be voice of reason's dream. Well, as for myself with the fault in the cutie marks, this is just a fun, sweet episode. I mean, it's probably one of the stronger Crusader episodes. Gabby is just so enjoyable, so upbeat and cheerful and, and nice We'll we'll get into this later when we get hip deep into spoilers, but uh, it's funny that this character so could have so easily been called a Mary Sue by the fans, and they avoid that pitfall. No small task. I will say that I've harped on the past about other cultures in Equestria. They always seem to be awful, and they just want to be like the ponies. It's always about the ponies. And here's a griffin that wants a cutie mark. And I just like, ah, you know, that's not the worst thing. But at the same time, I'm it's, I'm picking up on the theme. It's still coming through. <laughs> okay. Hey, everybody wants to be like the ponies. <laughs> ponies all say master species. <laughs> no. We will be very, very cute and adorable. We will all hu- hug and friendship you. No. But if you do not, we shall turn you to stone. Nine. 
Oh nein, wie schon sagen, was ist Spoilers? Schnell! Uh, so, uh, if you have not watched this yet, please pause it here and um, go catch up on it because it's a really good show. And welcome back. Yes, we waited for you. Yes. We tried. Yes, we really did. We've been waiting for so long and we're all starving. Yes, I had to eat sati. I'm... Hey, I'm so alive. Well, I ate your leg. No, you didn't. <laughs> Norman, you're creeping on me. Yeah, no, no, Norman's so hungry, he's delusional. They're true. They're too. Silver, help me. Uh, I think I think he's beyond help. I think you just need to get him, like, uh, I don't know, some Brussels sprouts or something. Okay. Anywho, let's, let's dive into this episode, starting with the opening sequence where the Cutie Mark Crusaders are actually now official Cutie Mark consultants. So much so that grown adults are... Referring to them as experts. Anyone else feel like they kind of jumped the gun on this? I have to point out something here first, because if you notice the parent's cutie mark, it's a really specific cutie mark that at first glance, you don't really pick up on their mentality. But once you look at it again, like the father's cutie mark are a pair of swords clashing um, it's more. Well, it's for fencing. Yes, but still, it's swords. And the mother's cutie mark is a pearl or a clamshell with pearls in it. So the whole pirate motif here does make sense. Mm, yeah. Well, he's a duelist, and she likes pearls. I mean, good gravy! How much? How much is she wearing? Um, is she wearing any? She's wearing a pearl necklace, a pearl. Earring and I don't pearl. know. Oh, hoof, hoof band bracelet. I'm surprised the fans didn't name her Pearl. They're probably Mystery Science Theater fans who remember a certain Pearl. <laughs> but basically, yeah, they're these parents are worried about their daughter's cutie mark, which is a skull and bones. Mm-hmm. And when they discover, oh, she's an archaeologist, I find this delightful. They're terrified that she might her special talent might be piracy. I guess she'd start the equestrian bit torrent. <laughs> but they fully had a pirate outfit ready to go. In other words, they were totally willing to support her in her life of piracy. <laughs> that, that, that is good. That, that is, um, yay. Her name, though, also suggests, like, that she would be an archaeologist, though. Petunia Paleo. I'm in archaeology, so I have an archaeology class, so I hear that word a lot. Paleo, which means past. Mm-hmm. Well, mostly. That and I also hear it in uh, geology class because rocks. Mm. All right. But still, I do love the parents' look when they say, No, oh, 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 no, no, we don't didn't, we didn't think that. Oh. And their eyes go, <laughs> like, go to one Are side. Are we sure they weren't transplanted from Starlight Glimmer's uh, Equality Town? Probably. Who knows? Silver, hide me. <laughs> yeah, ha but I didn't listen. Uh, <laughs> we are insane in the membrane. Yes, we are. You but... guys are scaring me though more than usual this episode. Well, that's just because we live in scary times. Mm-hmm. Of course we do. It's all scary times. Indeed. But what's scary for the Crusaders, however, is the thought that maybe one day they'll come across a problem that they can't help. Which is a unique and timely concern, because basically they just tempted the gods of plot convenience. (sighs) Yeah, the the few things that you should never say is, what could go wrong? Yeah, how, how could this get any worse? I have a bad feeling about this. Let's get married before I go off to battle. Oh, God, no. <laughs> I'm only three days from retirement. <laughs> I'm wearing a race shirt. I'm sitting in the corner. Anyway, they the Crusaders return to their uh, clubhouse where they say, hey, what if we ran across a griffin? Oh, we ran across a griffin. Huh, it really works. Yes, there is a, there's a griffin on the perch. And, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna reiterate this. If If griffins have a reputation for being negative, it's because they've been really negative so far. So I don't blame them for hiding. That and Gabby's look on her face, it doesn't really <coughs> scream delightful. Oh yeah. Just yet. They really set this one up pretty well, where um, there's a griffin, 
she's looking mean. Like, oh, the very bad Griffin. What, what does she want to do with the CMCs? At first glance, I thought she was kind of the punk. You know, like how Gilda was. And our first impression of Griffinstone was not very positive while everyone was really, really rude. Really awful. Still waiting for that Griffin that abandoned Rainbow Dash to get her comeuppance. Mm-hmm. But then the Griffin, she spies them and eee! ensues. Uh, yay! Ease are about squeeze. And so she we scares are... me. <laughs> and so we introduce to Gabriella the Griffin mm-hmm. or Gabby. So thoughts, Safi, Gabby, go. Too much ear bleeding from all the squeeing. But okay, okay. On my initial first thought. She was annoyingly adorable, and I liked it, but at the same time, I wanted to throw lemons at this person. She's almost too sickingly sweet for me, that's what I'm trying to say. Wow. That's a very sour outlook. Mm Mm-hmm. Indeed. So, if you started throwing lemons, would it be a battle on the Rhine? Probably. Oh, no. If you needed help, would you need lemon aid? (laughs) Sure, I'll gladly have some. (laughs) Your attempts are... Unique, but unsuccessful. I can hear your rage. All the rage. I do uh, enjoy Gabby, though, overall. I just... She needs to be toned down a bit with her, um... Sweetness. But meanwhile, Norman, I, I sense your barely contained enthusiasm. What do you think of Gabby? On first viewing, I really like the personality. I really like the character. And yeah, I, I was true... It live and whatnot, and didn't really got a second chance to look it on stream. But for the review, I sat down and looked at the episode again, and oh my god, she is adorable and cute, and I want a plush of her. She is very positive and very cheerful. She, she has that attraction. She has that positive nature that everything will be all right, and you can do almost anything with her around you feel that it's going to be okay and it's going to be fine. Optimism. I like it. Yes. We we could use some of that. Indeed. As for me, I, I enjoy her optimism. Having seen Griffin Stone just chock full of selfish and angry, it's nice to see a little diversity that there's just one really nice Griffin in the mix. Now, granted, there's always that argument, oh, she was born good. She's not... She's just arbitrarily not like the other Griffins. Which, I don't know, I mean, it, this is a show aimed at the young, so you can't really get deep, deep into character backstory. I'm curious what makes her different from other Griffins. What changed her outlook on life from the others? I could theory craft one thing, because going a bit further where she explains her situation is that she felt different in terms of her personality. She's not like the other Griffin, where the other Griffins are mostly selfish. They only think about themselves. Uh, Gabby here, from the in- initial introduction, says that she felt different and she wants to help. It could be something that she wants to be different from the rest because everybody else is a grumpy grump and helping others makes her feel good. So... Doing something that she likes is, well, helping. So whenever she can, she tries to help. But in Griffinstone, nobody likes to help. So she's the odd one out. Well, that comes across in her flashback. But my question is why she likes to help out when the Griffin norm is to be selfish. So either she's an aberration, a positive aberration, but an aberration, or... Wait, she could be the meat, she could be the Griffin X Man. <laughs> Check her for claws. She has claws. Yeah, proof positive. She's Wolverine. Check for a healing factor. Oh no. Uh, but still, I do like. I'll grab the gun. Why do you want to maim her? You're evil. She's she's still drinking those. Lemons. I I want I want to test Gabby's healing factor. <laughs> You know, a paper cut would do just as well. Yeah. Yeah, fine. I'll grab the really big, sharp paper. Ow. Ow. 
I can't pick it up. Can somebody help me? No. I No, those okay. sting. Dang. Yeah. Dang, girl. You messed up. Yeah. And now I'm bleeding everywhere. All right. Well, we, while we get a tourniquet for a Sapphire's uniquely delicate skin, it seems. <laughs> Basically, I, I enjoy Gabby, but I'm always curious about how. There's the argument of nature versus nurture going on here. She's just arbitrarily born more pony attitude than Griffin, it seems. So in a nice bit of continuity, <laughs> we get to see the end of the lost treasure of Griffin stone as she is enamored by Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash's hindquarters. <laughs> yes, she's <clears throat> just staring at their hindquarters the whole time, watching them walk away. she be taking the two show. It should be like, dang, them some fine cutie marks. Oh, God, Silver, now you're making it even creepier than it needs to be. Why? But you fall into the same category as Norman. Why? Because it makes you uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, wow. Actually, here's a question. Gilda has a letter for Rainbow Dash, which is addressed using Rainbow's cutie mark. Mm -hmm. Convenient. <laughs> Although that doesn't really give a proof of address. Well, uh, let's just say for convenience sake, uh, scribbling down words doesn't really say that, oh, this is Rainbow Dash's letter. She does say it, but I don't know. Maybe the art department just wanted to highlight that, oh, this is a letter for Rainbow Dash. Probably that. Either way, she, Gabby has come to Ponyville <laughs> and... You know, we kind of skipped in the opening montage a bunch of ponies that the Crusaders have helped out. Mm -hmm. Pe uh, Penelope Paleo. Uh, Petunia Paleo. Petunia Paleo. Uh, both <laughs> biceps, tender taps, and then Blue's Note. Mm -hmm. Which makes me worried if there's a guy named, if there's a pony named Brown Note. Uh, no. Oh, God. Please, no. Yeah, do you guys know what a Brown Note is? I know what it is. Shush. <laughs> I've it's seen South Park. It's the shiznat is what it is. Uh, but anywho. Oh my god, Silver, why? Why? Because I can. And so Gabby wants a cutie mark, pony culture. She wants her, she wants an emblem on her hindquarters, a, a symbol on her sides. Yep. That's what she wants. A oh. representation on her rump. <laughs> yep. And these Time to get the tattoo artist. <laughs> Uh, but they say to her that only ponies can have the cutie marks, and there's no griffin in recorded history that has managed to get a cutie mark. Uh, this has caused me some personal strain, as people just keep messaging me, Silver, what do you think that griffins can't have cutie marks? Silver, what do you think that griffins can't have cutie marks? Oh, well, you're a hippogriff. You yes, have a, a pony flank. Yes, I am a horse's patoot. <laughs> I stand they think we should be messaging Wanga Common, my god. I stand in defiance of Twilight's uh generalizations. Also, I'm just looking at the screenshots of Twilight's library in the Crystal Castle. It's so blue. All the books are blue. Blue upon blue. It is so dark and cold. I still don't like her castle. <laughs> You've mentioned it before. I like the castle. I just wish it had more, less crystal-y factor. Ironically, as I am the crystal gem pony. But I'm just, I'm just thinking, how does Twilight stand all this? Cold and impersonal. This is no home. Because purple. Purple stands out best in a warm background. True. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. It's hard for me to defend the color choice for the castle interior. Well, the MLP staff has proven to sometimes not know how to work with colors. That's easily proven in the season finale. Oh, we'll be getting to that in good time. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is, it is good times. But basically, the Crusaders go back, and they just can't bear to tell Gabby uh, that that she can't have a cutie mark. In fact, Scootaloo, of all, knows the feeling of wanting something and you can't have it. Delicately flapping her little wings, which yeah. is just not, it's so heartbreaking. Yeah. It makes you want to cry, doesn't it, Silver? <laughs> it's okay, man. You're fine. Yeah. Everything <laughs> will be okay. She'll fly one day. 
Do you have any liquor? What? I said, do you have any liquor? When I'm sad, I want me some booze. Okay, okay no. here's your whiskey. Ah, yay. But anywho. So, actually, we kind of go backwards. We're right back to, uh, what, what was it? Call of the Q- No, the Showstoppers. Mm-hmm. Where they come up with an entire list of things to do and try. Well, that's the CMC's way of doing things. Don't know what to do? Let's make a chart of things to do. And so we have a montage. Everybody needs a montage. Montage! And a really awesome song. Um. Honestly, I don't even really remember the song itself. Uh, honestly, it is... It's not really an awesome song, but it sort of fits well into the episode. Mm-hmm. For a montage song, it does Although work. it annoyed me. I didn't like the song that much. Uh, not that much. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we, we get the exact opposite of the showstoppers. While the Crusaders were basically a, one po- a three-pony wrecking crew, <laughs> I mean, they just ruined the town, Gabby is good at everything. Yep. What Seriously, is- I mean, when you can help out Sakura, who's usually the get out of jail card, <laughs> and she's teaching Shirley's classes and even giving ponies hugs. Yep, and also cleaning the boutique, and also cleaning up kelp, and picking apples, and oh wow, she does a lot, even babysitting and drying the clothes, helping bulk my set with boxes, and help. Well, she does a lot. Let's just say she hit home runs and also Mary played the Sue. I won't say Mary Sue. Well, actually, let's talk on, let's talk on that because many people would call this a Mary Sue moment. True. Normally. True. I do see the similarities in terms of what a Mary Sue is. Technically, the character that is good at everything and everybody loves. But over here, she just wants to make everyone happy. That's the thing with Gabby here. Well, Norman, I'm going to challenge your definition of a Mary Sue because people often use people often denounce a Mary Sue not on basically they denounce her because a character is good at anything. If your character does anything right, they're instantly a Mary Sue. Uh, I, now, my definition of a Mary Sue is not a character that lacks for talent. I mean, the fact that Gabby is good at all this is fine. But she's going to suffer internal conflict. Mary Sue's, in my eyes, never suffer internal conflict. They always know what to do. They're never out of place or up against a barrier they can't overcome. And because of that, they have no vulnerability. Mm. I mean, this is the grand, this is the grand contradiction. Gabby is good at so many things, but she can never get what she really wants, a mark. True that. Well, I don't know the proper definition. I do know what uh, Mary Sue is. Is, but the proper definition is something I don't know how to explain. Well, that might be a topic for another day. When Can we talk about what really makes a Mary Sue? Oh, we can have Maddie on. She can have Maddie Sue on. Well, there you go. That's something. <laughs> oh, great. I'll hide the brooms. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could just ask Mary Sue on. Also, Actually, I do... I'd like to. I'd like to see Mary again. Oh boy! I'll I'll grab all the brooms. Oh, come on! <laughs> you got it for me here. She's coming to take me away. Oh no! Oh come on! That was one of the best moments of that video. Oh, but but we hit we hit the part where this will this will have a bucket for your tears on standby. Josh would like to collect your brony tears for his next drink. <laughs> Because the Crusaders realize they've hit the end of their list, and while Gabby is the toast of the town, she is no she is no closer to getting her cutie mark. And so they finally have to own up to it. And I've seen a screenshot of, of Teary Gabby, and I'm, I'm feeling a little sad myself. Yep. Aww, and you do have feelings. I can't believe, I can't believe people like this Griffin more than me. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, right? Um, watching this the second time around, tears came out. Like, uh, <laughs> I fell for Gabby. It's like, oh no. And the CMCs too. <laughs> and Gabby actually goes into denial. She won't believe it. Yeah. She won't take, she won't take a page from Naruto and believe it. 
Well, it's more like. <laughs> I didn't know that would trigger Safi so much. <laughs> I haven't seen Naruto in a long time, but oh my gosh, that was too good. <laughs> uh, I think she got me to subscribe to the um, rule of Gorilla Gun. Do the impossible. See the invisible. Row, row, fight the power. My beak is a beak that will pack heaven. <laughs> Yay. Oh Although that means you'd have to, like, merge with another bigger griffin to form a super griffin. And merge with another one to make it galactical size. Cue the fusion music. What fusion music? I don't know. Any fusion music from Steven Universe. <laughs> ah. you. All I want to do is see you turn into, into a giant, a giant griffin. A giant, giant griffin. <laughs> Silver, I didn't know you actually watched that. Yeah, blame uh, my friend Game Leon, who he is on a crusade to get me to watch that show. <laughs> you I've need seen, to watch that show. I've seen I've seen a few episodes, but I haven't really caught the the flow as other fans have yet. Yeah, it, yeah, it, takes but a while. it usually happens like at the end of season one. It'll uh, get it, better, trust me. Ah, but we're not talking about Steven Universe. We're talking about Pony Universe. <laughs> Yay! A, a Can universe. We go back to Steven Universe. <laughs> oh, come on! What you you you're part of the ponies already? Everyone's sorry, we're calling off the podcast. Safi's tired of ponies. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> no. Okay, fine. I'll stick around. Right, no, no, we will have no duddies of the fuddies here. Yes. Fine. <sighs> but basically, the Crusaders are having a good sulk, and Gabby comes saying, I have a cutie mark. Behold my totally not a tattoo. Yay. And Sweetie Belle's eyes, face, whatever it is. My goodness. She has the most awesome face. Now, what's like, funny what is, the utter hell? <laughs> and meanwhile, when they say this to Twilight, she instantly believes them. I'm amazed at the trust these ponies share. Not true. But Twilight is just so adorable in this one. You would say she's adorable. Well, she's yeah, to- you think she's adorable until you're actually a griffin with, um, you know, a cutie mark. And then she proposes dissection for science. For a science! Exactly. (laughs) Which is why I'm hiding my boyfriend in the closet. Oh my. Is he coming out of the closet anytime soon? With me. (laughs) And we're all singing manga. Please come out of the closet. (laughs) (laughs) But but he won't come out of the closet. So I put out my gun! (laughs) (laughs) Uh. <laughs> I know the reference. <laughs> but here, here's the here's the fun thing about Twilight being adorable. I talked recently at a convention about the princess archetype. Hmm. Basically, that people get it backwards. They say every princess, want, every little girl wants to be a princess. Mm-hmm. It's more that every princess is supposed to represent young women. And so the idea is to be hungry for knowledge, eager to learn. And Twilight is her most fascinating when she has that passion, that energy to her. When she's just sort of milling about this cold blue library, seeming dispassionate, she's actually very boring. The minute she has something to study, oh, look at her go. Well, she has been um, known to be bored in the castle a few times now. Yeah, which is why she should get out of that dang thing. It's killing her character. True that. Maybe in the movie, who knows. Blow up the castle. No. Then she wants yes. to go home. Remodel she can, it. She can upgrade to the new Mega Uber Castle. Oh, yeah. Probably. On sale for twenty nine ninety five. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, but um, while Twilight here is really excited, she gave the CMCs a letter from Gabby saying that, Hey, I came here. See you. Bye-bye. Oh, Gabby, why do you darken your soul with lies? With lies. What I find funny about this, when they go to confront Gabby, mm-hmm. well, that sounds hostile. They go, they go to talk to her. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she comes clean. You notice this episode doesn't really have a climax in the sense that anything really comes to a, a head or a crash. There's no roller derby implosion. There's no uh, revealing the big bad. There's no everything goes to meltdown. Uh Kind of, yeah. I mean, even the, what you will call this, even All the... All that re- really happens is that Gabby's flank gets doused with mud. 
You know, even the reveal is not that dramatic. Mm-hmm. Even we could instantly tell, okay, this is fake. Oh, yeah. I mean, from the first time we saw the flank, we already know that it's fake. But now she's in the mud, and you're like, oh, Gabby, you're a dirty little griffin. Dirty, dirty little griffin. Okay, Silver, now you're being creepier than Norman. Yes, yes. I'm, gonna, I'm grabbing the newspaper and the water bottle. Oh, my. I didn't know you were into that. Bad hippogriff. Bad hippogriff. Ah, always. <laughs> always. But it's just sort of funny. Really, the the... The big moment where everything came crashing down was when they had to fess up to Gabby. We can't give you a cutie mark. Mm -hmm. That's really, I think, the climax of this. And everything else is is denouement, which is French for the new (laughs) mole. No, not really. But still, I I do know. I, I I don't understand how you feel about this one. The reveal, even the reveal of oh, Gabby, we're sorry, we couldn't get you a cutie mark. It didn't feel epic enough to have its, to have its own dramatic scene, dramatic music. It kind of sombers off where everybody's feeling sad. Cut to commercials. Come back. Gabby has a cutie mark. We all know that it's not true, but the story there and now the explanation here, like she, well, the one thing that she can't do is tell a good lie. Well, there you go. Yes, she, she is suspicious as can be. And she is done in by her helpful nature. Your first mistake, Gabby, was to care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But the CMCs have a revelation and ask Gabby to clean herself up and meet, uh, meet them at the clubhouse. That's what I say, they say, clean yourself up, you dirty little griffin. <laughs> Don't get me... Okay, Silver. Yeah, Stop. I know. I can't. I'm making you uncomfortable. <laughs> Why do you need to make me uncomfortable? You're making the audience uncomfortable. Okay, you just sort of answered your own question there. <laughs> uh, I did promise another side of silver. Oh, yes. Well, I, I told you guys I'm a horse's patoot. Kill me. Oh, wow, you really are drinking of those lemons today. I think that's been like your fifth plea for the sweet release of death. <laughs> <laughs> True that. Uh, anyway. We live in dark times, silver. Dark times. Ah. But anywho, basically the Crusaders are very innovative. Now, I've said before that I the whole we all have the same cutie mark, kind of a weird theme being defined by the group. And now they've given that mark to Gabby to say you're part of the group too. It's not, I don't know, it's not bad. It's just sort of like, huh. I mean, it's it's a sweet gesture. It's very kind. It's... uh it, it's basically trying to say you belong, but I also think, ah, but you're still defining someone by the group. Be be very, very, very friendly. <laughs> you will all be part of the Cutie Mark Crusaders. <laughs> oh, God, no. But still, uh, in all honesty, I feel, uh, how do I put this? The, the gesture is really nice for the CMCs to give Gilda, well, it's not really a cutie mark, but more of an emblem. And said emblem is the cutie mark crest with a trophy in the middle. Um, trophy probably symbolizing that she's good at almost anything she does. And her goal in life or her purpose is to help, like how the CMC does. But instead of helping others with cutie mark problems, hers is just to help in general. And they throw her a cute senyera, which is awesome. And looking at the title on MLP Wikia, they even include the tilde, which I appreciate that. That's good grammatically correct. Yay. Yay. And in all honesty, even if um, some of the ponies here want to debate that, oh, she's not a parony, she can have a cutie mark, they threw it out the window because of how awesome she is. Actually, some pony said that and they lynched him. He's just off screen. <laughs> good. <laughs> That's what you do. That's what you get for dissing Gabby. Yeah. Well, can we say that this is an economically feasible cute senyera? They, they gussied up the whole town. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, yeah. for all we know, Twilight is still trying to conduct her fake research. Probably. But in all honesty, she did help the whole town. Yes, indeedy. Although looking at the picture, I cannot see any of the main six in that crowd. Well, probably they're busy. They're probably... They're probably solving a friendship problem that'll be solved in about half an hour. Oh, uh, yeah. Or uh, monster. Probably that too. Ooh, uh-huh. return, return of the bugbear. And then Gabby destroys it. With Kung Fu. Kung Fu Gabby. I like it. 
And everybody was kung fu fighting. Uh, but with that, Gabby gets her own kutsunera and par- everybody parties. And the CMC says, do come back. We want to have more griffin in our diet. Yay. Yes, we, we need to represent. And epic high five. See, we're not racist. We have a griffin friend. <laughs> yeah, he's my boyfriend. No, no, no. You're a hippogriff. Always. <laughs> oh. But basically, the, and that's the funny thing. Like I say, there's no real big blow up. There's no brouhaha. There is only Gabby being sweet and adorable. Mm-hmm. And you know, there's one question I didn't ask when we started, but maybe should have. Did you guys watch this when it came out in Poland first? No, what? It came out in Poland yeah, first? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I a good portion of it, but I didn't understand. It's like, you know what? I'm just going to wait until it actually comes out in English release. See, I was lucky. I found a, I managed to grab the, uh, subtitled version. Someone translated it. So I, so Gabby sounds much smoother in that version. Less squeaky. Hmm. Really, you know. But it was, it was quite nice. In all honesty, I didn't catch the Polish version. I just catch the English version. And I don't know if I wanted to avoid spoilers or anything. But yeah, I I think it was to avoid spoilers. With the season ender, that one was quote-unquote unavoidable. Plus it was in English. So yeah. Yep. But it's neither here nor there, because this was a fun episode, but oh, yeah. I'll save that for my final thoughts. Safi, if you could put down the lemons for half a sec, what are your thoughts? Well, admittedly, okay, Gabby is sweet and adorable, and I can sort of accept her optimism, despite my cynical personality. I did enjoy this episode overall. I don't really have much to say, though, is also kind of why I've been so cynical there really isn't much to say on the matter with this episode. There's not much to say. And it frustrates me. Okay. I've been sort of sitting here like, what am I supposed to say about this episode? Because there's not really much to say. I'm going to pass it off to Norman. Wow. Really? You, you, there's nothing you can say? Positive nor negative? Not really. <laughs> I don't know. This episode sort of... I don't really have any strong feelings towards it. I just think Gabby's adorable and that's it. Hmm. Well, alrighty then. And for me, well, oh, how do I put this? I really enjoy this episode. This episode... I, I dare say that this is the best episode for season 6. In my eyes. Ooh. A bold play. Yeah. The reason is that, how do I put this? There's a few things that you're, you look for in an episode where, how does it make you feel after watching it? Is it good or is it bad? Like, if it's good, why does it make it good? Like, how do you feel after watching it? And for me, after watching this the second time, it made me feel good. It made me feel positive. Like, I was happy with joy. And to me, that is a good episode. If it can make me smile from ear to ear, that means it did something right. Even with the few problems that it has, it's in my eyes, it's still an awesome episode. With Gabby's personality here, she's overly excited and happy and really positive. And we don't have those characters that much. Probably you can say Pinkie Pie, but with Gabby here, it's a bit different with how she pulled it off. And the CMC is trying to help her reach her goal or get her cutie mark in that sense. is really heart-touching and really awesome. I, I just don't know what to add in because I feel that this episode is really, really good. It's not perfect, mind you. It has its problems here and there. But to me, it's not enough to say that it's a bad episode. In fact, I would say that this, to me, is the best episode for this season. I would just say, um, this could be my newest favorite episode. Well, well, that is a high benchmark. True. Mm, out, of my, 
how do I follow that up? Because I, I greatly enjoyed this episode. I thought Gabby is adorable. I like the struggle the Crusaders have, that they that you can't just magic a cutie mark onto someone. It does raise the question of, you know, what ponies seem to be totally blessed in this world. They have the best land, they have all the powerful magic, so on and so forth. I will I guess because I'm a big fan of fantasy, I like worlds where every region has something to offer. And right now there's still sort of that egocentrism. You know, the ponies have all the good stuff. But Gabby herself as a character is wonderful and enjoyable. And uh, just so much fun to see. And you, wa- you want her to succeed. You, you do feel bad when she has that harsh realization of reality. Mm-hmm. But it is also nice that they can say, you know, you don't need a cutie mark to be special. You're, you are just by being who you are. Mm-hmm. And here's something I didn't mention in the review, where with that positive personality, I believe that she can help uh, Griffinstone be better, be at its best. It just takes that one voice of positivity to make a change. And with Gilda um, also being there to quote-unquote make the change, I believe that, who knows, in Season 7 probably we'll see a change for the good or change for the better in Griffinstone. Who knows? When they will be inducted into the Weiser Friendship? When no. they shall become part of the Pony Iron Curtain? Actually, the, the Pastel Curtain, yes. The Pony Pastel Curtain that spans nations? No! Oh, God, no. Sapphire, but you will be very, very happy, yeah? Yeah? I'm not hearing it. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> oh, God. And still Yeah! Like... Uh, and... There, you're happy. <laughs> Ooh, well, I was, but then you, then you got like super bitter. Yeah, yeah like a whole bucket of lemons after that. <laughs> Land it. Uh, I mean, seriously, I think, I think just they, three words, there you happy, and you said like 50 words of pure venom. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Are you happy? <laughs> Ah, uh, but anyway, so that that was the fault in our cutie marks, which was a fun ju- episode, one of the better CMCs, I'd say. Yep. But okay. Norman, what what are we going to do moving forward? Well, grab your casino chips and grab your lucky horseshoe and rabbit's feet. We're going to Las Pegasus because next episode is going to be Viva Las Pegasus, where Fluttershy and Applejack go gambling. <gasps> Jake me with you. You need to be this high to ride. I am that high to ride. Alrighty then. You sign your contract to um, who's his name here? Uh, Glenn Main. Oh, thank you. thank you. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> I'll send him to the drill house rock. Just let me in the arcade. <laughs> uh, the arcade only has Pong. I hope you're happy. Okay. But that's a review for another day. For now, we we must go and ruminate on the magic of friendship and the ever-expanding pony culture. I need to find someone selling a Gabby plush. Oh, there you go. The next hot ticket at BronyCon. Gabby plushies. I Do they sell them? Like, you, you've both been to BronyCon. You notice them yet? Oh, oh well, there are, well, there are definitely plushies. Uh, I have to remember the timing. Did this episode come out before BronyCon? Um, I um, think it was around September. No, it was after BronyCon. Really? September All right, well, BronyCon, the episode that came after BronyCon was, um, what was it? It was, uh, the convention episode. Oh. Oh. Yeah. All right. Ah, too bad. I really want, uh, Gabby plush. But anywho. Well, g- give it time. <laughs> give it time. I'm sure, I'm sure there'll be a Gabby plush for sale somewhere. Yeah. Oh, well. All right. So, guys, if you know of a Gabby plush, let Norman know. He's willing to tell you to shut up and take his money. With the exchange rate now, probably not. Uh-oh. I'll I'll look on eBay for you, Norman. Uh, we'll see. Wow. 
We'll see. But in the meantime, guys, we will see you for a review of Viva Las Pegasus. And in the meantime, for the NBA show, I am Cecilia Vaquil. And I've been Norman Senzo. I hope you have a really good time watching us. And I'm Sapphire Heart Song, and I am going to slowly back away. And we're saying enjoy your lemons. See ya. Thank you. Oh, hey, I found a plush already. Yay. Oh, that's nice.